the mind runs around all the time, it's going to wear out. It needs a place where it can settle in and gather its strength. This is why we meditate. It gives the mind a chance to rest. But it's not just putting it to sleep. You have to be very active as you rest here to protect the mind from wandering off. The activity is mindfulness, in other words, remembering to stay with the breath, in this case. And alertness is watching what's actually going on. Is your mind staying with the breath? Okay. Is the breath comfortable? Check that out. If your mind wanders off, try to come right back. This adds a quality called ardency, when you really want to do this well. You realize that the mind needs this resting spot, it needs to develop its strength, because otherwise it just gets worn out by the world. and worn out by its desire to go running around all over the world, too. Thinking about this, thinking about that, it's got to stay put for a while to rest. It's like knowing that you've got a lot of work to do, but you can't just keep working 24-7. You've got to rest in order to get the work done, in the same way with the mind. There is useful work that gets done, but we tend to waste a lot of our energy just running around haphazardly. So here's the time to settle down and be still. Gain some control over this and develop the qualities that really strengthen the mind. Mindfulness, alertness, ardency. When you try to do this well, that's the ardency. Alertness watches the breath, watches over the mind. Make sure they stay together well. If they're not staying together, then you try to figure out why. Is the breath uncomfortable? Has the mind got a lot of other issues? You want to sort these things out. Because if you don't sort out your own mind right when you've got a chance like this, when are you going to do it? It gets cluttered by sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, all the things coming in from outside. And all its desires go running outside. What it needs is a little bit of restraint. Saying, not right now. We don't need to think about that right now. We don't need to do that right now. Give the mind a chance to rest and recover. Because otherwise the mind can be a real troublemaker. I've been reading about some Arctic explorers and most of their troubles were self-caused. I mean, it was hard enough, of course, being up there in the cold. But they had a group of people living together, and all they could do was bicker and fight all the time. Of course, that doesn't help anything. And why were they bickering and fighting? As well, they wanted to win out over each other. That doesn't accomplish anything either. And many of them ended up dying simply because they had no restraint. They had no sense of when it was right to talk and when it wasn't, when it was right to think and when it wasn't. So we can learn from their lessons. Okay. If your mind is creating trouble in your life, okay, stop and look at it and start sorting it out. And this is what the meditation does. It gives you a good, solid place to stay, a comfortable place to stay in the present moment, so you can look at the various thoughts as they come and go, and decide which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to push out or just let go. And in doing this, your, your mind gets cleared up an awful lot, and then your life gets cleared up as well. Because it's the mind that's the source of all your actions, and it's your actions that really shape your life more than anything else. So look after this one quality right here, this quality of awareness here in the present moment. Make sure it stays steady, make sure it has a good foundation. So that when you need to think, you think. When you don't need to think, you come right back here. So at the very least, the, this main troublemaker inside you no longer makes any trouble. As for the trouble that comes from outside, that's nothing compared to the stuff that we stir up from within ourselves. So look after this first, and everything else will be bearable, manageable.